Hi and welcome, it's Ruth here. And I've got such a pile of One Sheet Wonders from all the stamping that we've been doing over the last few weeks, dare I say some months, and I'm trying to think what I could do with them and I just asked a couple of friends and they went, make a box, do something 3D. So, all right, let's see how many bags and boxes we can make. And I tend to, if I do make bags and boxes, I try and keep it pretty simple. And also I like to try and find a way of, I don't know, making multiples in one go or making them flat pack so that, yeah, I can just store them and then open them up when I need to. So I'm going to look at different sheets that I've got here and think about, you know, what what's the best way to show off the pattern? That's ultimately, you know, when you're making a bag or box and you've, you know, designed something really beautiful, you've got to think, right, okay, what's the best way to kind of show this off? So I don't know if you guys got one that you like the look of and you think, oh, please. Oh, no, that one's not for a bag or box. That's for making a card. Uh, if you think you can see one that would look nice as a bag or box, then just shout. I've got lots of different things here. So I think this would be nice. Oh, it's quite thick as well. This would be nice to make a massive box. So that would be fun. And then, I don't know, something like that would just make a stunning, like, bag. Um, or... Yeah. Oh. Anyway, thank you, Deborah. Shared. Awesome. Right. So while you're coming in, if you want to share this out with some friends, I don't know if you, some of you are bag and box makers. Oh, there's a nice masculine one. That would be great for making a, a Father's Day gift, wouldn't it? A Father's Day gift box. And look, that. Mm, yeah. Super interesting. Anyway. You guys, you just letting each other know when I'm on, on live, are you? That's so cool. Hi, everybody. Welcome. I nearly didn't come on tonight because I'm feeling a little bit weary. So I thought I, I would come on but do something hopefully fairly simple. That's not going to stress me out too much. Okay, so the first technique I want to show you is something that I'm sure I saw the other day on YouTube. And it's a box that I have made before. I'll see if I can find one similar. Um, okay, so it's this it's this kind of box where it, you've got this hinge lid and it folds over. It's like pizza box style, isn't it? Okay, so I want to make like something like that, but not have to do too much measuring. All right, so I think this might blow your mind, <laughs> or it might not. You may have seen it before, and you might just go, meh, meh. We've seen that before, Ruth. Why are you showing us that? Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to score at one and a quarter. I think one and a quarter would be good because you get a good good depth of box. One and a quarter all the way around. So if you're using your Stampin' Up trimmer, remember to use the score. Leave the, the, the cutting blade out the way. And... We're just going to score at one and a half, sorry, one and a quarter inches all the way around. If you want to do it in centimetres, it works out at about three centimetres. So, if, yeah, if you want to do three centimetres, that's fine. So, hello, everybody. You're taking a break from canning vegetables. Oh, yes, I saw that you were doing that. You mentioned it on um, Denise's yesterday. Hi, Deborah, Vanessa, Vicky, Subo, Dina, Vicky, Christine, we've got two Vickies, Vanessa, Denise, uh, Stampin' Yama, that's, is that Linda? Uh, Janine, Martina, Melanie, Glenna, hello, Bobby, hi Vanessa. You got the notification, yay! Excellent. Okay, so I've scored at one and a quarter all the way around. Okay, now, I could have to do some fancy dancy trying to figure out the maths of this but this is what I saw somebody do 
they then got their card and, and obviously if it's quite stiff you have to kind of like give it a bit of a roll to to make sure that it um, is pliable and what you do is you make the edge meet the first score and oh I'll get my bone folder my sister kind of gifted me this great big bone folder so I can use that and then you turn it around and I know it's a little bit creased I know but it does save time so it kind of you know you can forgive me and you won't notice the creasing on the outside which is the most important thing and then you meet, get that to meet that and then you do your burnishing okay and then you go around all the edges you see before when I used to do this card I used to you know measure it really carefully I used to cut it down to size um, I've done this at workshops and so I've had to you know produce 10 perhaps you know I've done this and then I've given the measurements out to the ladies you know uh, but this is a complete game changer because look you can either use that now to make a box so you could just cut this all down to make a box or you can do the you know the little pizza box styly it's up to you so now all you need to do is um, actually, all I tend to do is snip straight down the middle here. And if you want to just do a little bit of a trim off there, you can do. And then, now you've got to think, which way am I going to stick this? So, that one's going to go there. Okay. So, that one gets trimmed there. Actually, I think you just do it to all the these parallel lines. That's the, probably the easiest way to do it. And that way you don't kind of forget what you're doing. And you turn it around. Do your lines. Now, it is a bit trickier with these ones, I know, because the the paper kind of scrunches up a little bit more. It's not as clear... Uh, score mark but as I said once it's all put together I don't think anyone's going to notice so you get your adhesive and you pop some on there pop some on there fold it in and hold One, two, three, four, five. What was that Didi that just came in? Deanna Didi. Hey, how are you? Wouldn't be the first time I've cut instead of scored, says Janice. <laughs> yeah, I think when I get the cutters, I trim a cutter thing. I change which order they go in. I like to have the score at the top and then the cutting blade at the bottom. Whereas I think when they come, they come the other way round. So, so turn it around. Blobbity blob, blobbity blob. Fold it in. Close it. Ah, now this point actually, it's a good idea to fold this around it so that when you actually stick this portion together you've already allowed a little bit of space for it to go around each other if that makes sense because that's on the outside so actually if you close it and stick it I'm just going to wipe my fingers they're a little bit a little bit gooey that's my little spray. Just need to wipe my fingers off. Oh, well, the thing is, if you want a custom made box, um, then obviously you do need to kind of measure it and, and all the rest of it. 
But this way of making it, it's a great way to make a box without wasting any of your your card. Because um, you, you know, I've not cut anything off. Right, so this point here, you can fold backwards and forwards because this has got to be a hinge, so it needs to be a bit more flexible. And then, so at this point here, you just put a bit of glue there, a bit of glue there, pop that in. Hold it, count to five, un, deux, trois, quatre, cinq, six. Hmm, got me thinking how to stamp to get the best box. Well, if you want to, you can always score first, then stamp. That's the other option. But sometimes it's best just to, you know, do an overall design and be surprised where it ends up. You know? Sometimes more fun can be had by just being having a surprise. Okay, now to finish it, if you've got a bit of a corner rounder, I would actually round that off. And it just so happens I still have the old Stampin' Up corner rounder, she says, somewhere. Where do I put it? So I will use that, but if you've got any other type of corner around it. Now also, can you see, it's not very, look, not very good there. So you can tidy up little areas by getting your scissors in there and giving it a little bit of a trim. I'm not doing a very good job here. Maybe I should have done that before I stuck it down. Never mind. Yeah, you can use your small circle punch for the opening. I was planning to do that. I just so happen to have my one and a half inch punch here. Not sure it'll fit, but oh yes, it does. So you kind of eyeball it, find the middle, pop, there we go. And there you go, you've got your little finger opening section. And there's a really nice little sturdy box. And, you know, you might want to gift somebody a punch. Ta-da, there we go. Nice little prezi. Cute. Or you could just use it for storing stuff. I mean, um, that is approximately the size of our, you know, retired stamp cases. You know, we don't have these stamp cases anymore. So if you wanted somewhere to keep your reinkers, that is actually a really nice... Look, so I've got reinkers. There we go. That's a really nice place to kind of store them. They fit in there. So, there we go. Right, moving on. Let's do a wee little bag. Did anyone see any papers they, they want to see me use? Oh, sorry, what are the original measurements of the sheet? So, this is the British A4. So, you could do that with the American 8.5 by 11. So, this measures just under 12 inches by 8 and a bit inches. So, it doesn't... What I love about this technique is that it doesn't matter what size sheet you've got. So, it doesn't matter if you're in the States or Australia or Britain... You just, um, you basically just, you just score a portion all the way around. So obviously if you wanted a less, you know, not such a deep box. So this box measures at one and a quarter because I scored one and a quarter all the way around. If you wanted it less deep and longer and wider, then you would score it a two. Now if you wanted it a bit deeper, you could score it a two. Hey, should we try that? We could do that, couldn't we? 
I could score it too and see what happens and maybe do a top folding opening box with this one. Yeah, should I do that? So let's see what happens. Hi Jenny. So let's see what happens if I score at two inches all the way around. Which is actually quite fun because it's got this fountain pen image down the middle there. So that would be nice. Oh no, I can't do a top folding because it's not that type of box. What am I talking about? It will still be a side opening one. So we've scored two inches all the way around. Da, 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 da. Don't need my trim up anymore. Fold the first to the first line there. And fold that one to the first line there. Then burnish all the way around. Burnish, burnish. Actually, I think I'll use my bigger scissors because my little scissors are a bit, little bit short on there. And I think what I'll do is actually cut tiny little V's this time just to make them sit a bit nicer. So you just cut a little mini V, or a deep V, <laughs> out of uh, each section. Turn it round, do the same. Actually, if you've got super sharp, 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 blah, if you've got super sharp scissors and you've done it on the thinner Whisper White, you can probably fold it over and just cut, cut up the middle, but it, it, yeah, you just need you need to be quite, you know, good at wielding your scissors to do this. And sharp scissors as well. These are actually, I'm being a bit naughty, these are my fabric scissors. So I'll have to, I'll have to um, sharpen those next time I use them on fabric. Okay, so then decide which bit is going to go over which bit. So I quite like the idea of that closing down on top of there. So I'm going to bend that bit back so that I know it opens and closes well. And then it's just a case of gluing it all together. So let's see how this fits together. I'll pop that one there. That one there. So how is everybody? What have you guys been up to today? The weather was a little bit windy still here in Wales, but a bit sunnier than the day before. Oh, it's Ascension Day. Ah. Right, what does Subo say to me? Round your corner. Round my corner. Ooh, right, okay, yep. Round the corner. I'll do that in a second. I'm just going to pop that one in there. So those of you who are demonstrators, have you been doing your launch parties and things of the new catalogue? Have your customers been enjoying it? Right, so let's pop this around it, oops, no, that way, 
오늘 just gonna hold it for a few seconds give it a little bit of a massage you know massage your box there we go there we go and then get your small little well you can use a small punch actually if you've got a smaller circular one you can do it this is the one and a half inch punch but you could do it with a one inch or the quarter, three quarter inch if you've got it yeah so there we go that's a sort of more squattish box so we've got using exactly the size same size paper for both of them this one was scored at one and a quarter inches all the way around and this was scored at two inches. And so you can see the, like, the difference, see the difference in sizes. All right, so that's quite useful to know, isn't it? That you can then make, you, know, you can put a handkerchief and a watch. Um, what else could you put in there? Some mini bars of chocolate, packets of seed. I don't know, whatever it is you're gonna give your father some keys good isn't it right so that was fun just to see the options on that one right let's make ourselves a quick bag so I have done this design before but I think it's sometimes it's good to revisit it because um, yeah just simple is good Wonder what measurements I would need for about six A2 cards. What size are your A2 cards? Because in America, A2 means different to here in the UK. I got my SU parcels today and then was busy to organise all the staff. The staff? You need the staff to put the stuff away, Martina? <laughs> Tomorrow morning for my launch, recruited two people today. <gasps> Woohoo! Well done, Janice! Yeah, oh, bath bombs. Yeah, bath bombs would fit, I think. Yeah, that would be cute. Yeah, so A2 is 4.25 by 5.5. All right, well, I'll, I'll check that out in a minute. I'll just drop that down and we'll see what, what we can do. Oh, you have to keep going out and coming back in again. Oh, sorry to hear that. Five point five. There we go. Right. So the way I make a quick little bag is to basically measure the size of paper that you have, divide it roughly into half, or first of all take off a little measurement at the side, then divide it into half. All right. So it all kind of depends you know what you're working with I guess in the states because you're working with um it's eight and a half by eleven just co to correct me if I'm wrong while I sort out this measurement um can someone just remind me is it eight and a half by eleven in 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 the states okay so in the uk this measures just over 11 and a half inches okay uh okay so you guys would be working to a smaller size all right we'll, we'll sort out that measurement in a second I'll, I'll do the british measurement and then do the american so for a little bag a tall bag this is now because <coughs> we ours measures just over 11 inches um, I would then score at 11 inches just to, you know, or tw or 28 centimetres. Actually, 28 centimetres probably make more sense. But if you're doing it in inches, do it at 11 inches. So I would score that immediately because we need that flap to do the, um, to stick down. Okay, so that's out the way. And now we've got two fantastic round numbers. We've got 11 and 28, which are really easy to kind of like divide up. 
So then you need to divide that number in half. So 11 divided by 2 is 5.5, or 28 centimetres divided by 2 is 14 centimetres. And then decide how, how wide you want your gusset. So your gusset is kind of the, the side panel to the, to the bag. So say we go for a four centimetre gusset or about one and a half inch gusset. We're going to turn this around. Oh, no, we're not. no, we're not. We're not going to turn it around at all. We're going to put it into the trimmer. Score at four centimetres or one and a half inches. That's four. Score at ten and four inches or four, or four inches. So choose one or the other. Then score at fourteen or what's that? Five and a half inches. Oh, pants. No, I didn't mean to do that. Why am I doing that? <sighs> See, I knew I shouldn't. Bobby, I blame you. I told you I was too tired to do this. Right, sorry. Four, then <laughs> 14. Ignore that one. <laughs> and then 18. Right. And because you've already decided what size your gusset is, you can make your bottom panel either anywhere between sort of two and a half and four centimetres. So I'm going to go for three. Or thereabouts. Right. So if you ever do that and you accidentally score a line that you didn't want to have there, what you can do is try to get rid of it. So you can turn your piece of paper over and you can try and burnish back down over where you went. Just to kind of try and smooth it out a little bit. It won't be perfect because you've already creased the papers, but you can sort of try to get rid of it a little bit so it doesn't look so bad. There we go. Right. So then burnish your panels. Try and make sure to burnish the correct ones if you've made a boo boo. And then all you need to do is cut your little section. So, bam. Um, uh, first you score a glue line and fold it under, then fold it in half from that one half you fold and they... Ah, okay. I think I sort of understand what you mean, but I'd have to actually do it. Okay, and then remember just to chop that bit off there. All right, and then to stick it all together, remember you can... What, what I tend to do is just fold, fold that section over, put glue on your flappy bit and then turn just push that down and then just hold that for a few seconds I love the pink color used on the flowers oh thank you um I think it was Rococo Rose and oh I don't know I've colored it in with something I think I coloured it in with a Stampin' Blend, actually. Yeah. And then the the base can just be stuck. You push those that one in, or, or that one, depending on which one you want to have showing. And then just put a little bit of glue across there. So obviously once you've glued it, it's not a flat pack anymore. That's 
Oh, something went wrong here. But anyway, we'll, we'll work it out. Give that a bit of a press. And then what I like to do is just tuck these sections in. Give that a bit of a push. And you can make that go down as far as you want. Depends what you're going to put in it, really. So there you have this really cute, pretty patterned box that goes all the way around. And I like to either, um, you can either punch holes there if you want to, or I just put a nice little peg. Oh, I've got one on my desk. There we go. Put a little peg on the top and then you can attach a label and maybe something hanging down as well. But to be honest, once you've if you've stamped something as beautiful as this, you don't really want to... Um, I don't think you want to cover up too much of the stamping, really, because it's it's so pretty. So there we go. Oh dear, you guys are having problems with the comments. Sorry about that. Right, so I don't know whether to try and attempt to... Um, Martina's um, yes you could use a border punch that would look really pretty so Martina are you suggesting that I score it in the same way or um, did you say oh actually no you said do your border first right let's do this I think I think I think I understand what you're saying that you don't need to do measurements as long as you you do this bit first I think I think that's what you're saying to me so I don't know let's score it at one and a half So you're saying that once you've got your flap, you would then just fold that to there. I'm sort of trying, I didn't read your comments super well, and I'm trying to kind of like figure it out from what you've, you've just said to me. So you just fold that there. So you can really only do this with the thinner, I mean, you can do it with a thicker cardstock if you want, but you end up with creases. So you do that there like that. Yeah, so that bit goes under there. And then are you saying you just decide how wide you want your your gusset? Is that what you're suggesting? Okay, so say I wanted my gusset that wide. So I basically fold that to there. This is the no measure way of doing bag and box making. With Martina in Germany trying to explain it to Ruth. And then... To get that so how do I find that panel um, uh, have I done have I not done that correctly should I do, should I've done that bit first? So if that goes there, oh, I suppose if I glue it, okay, I'm going to glue it. <laughs> Martina says, shall I phone? Hold on, I think I might be able to do it. Let me, I'll, I'll be able to figure it out, I think. So I just got to let it, let it make sure it's really stuck. And then, what you do... Ta-da! <laughs> I knew I'd figure it out. I might not have done it the way Martina says to do it, but I have sort of done it, haven't I? There we go, so you do it that way first. That's so cool. 
And then you basically decide, because obviously on the, and I think what Martina's saying that is what you do is then you can figure out how deep to fold it by, if you do that, you know that you need to do it that, at that point there. So then you just fold that up like that. So this is kind of like, yeah, the no, the no measuring way of creating a bag stroke box. Now there is a way of doing it like that, isn't there? Do it that way. Cut up the rect, cut up the rectangle, and wedge into the square. Yeah, I, yeah. I think if I wanted to do this style, I needed to have. Um, yeah, I need to have done it slightly different, don't I? But um, but yeah, the, the the traditional way of doing it is literally just to cut up up here. I'm thinking of a different way. So you pretty much end up with the same outcome, but with less, um, actually I might just that come off now. Martina, I think you should make a video. I could not freestyle this. I need the measurements. Oops, I just glued that wrong. Well done. Ah! Oh, it's because I've got this little nubbiny bit. Hold on. There we go. You need measurements. <laughs> well, I've just gone and proven that you don't need measurements. But I wouldn't recommend doing it with the thicker paper though. I would I would only ever do it with the thinner whisper white or very vanilla. Right, there we go. Look. Can you tell I didn't use measurements? Apart from it just being slightly more creased there. So this is what you do when you don't have a, a trimmer to hand. This is how you make a box. Do you want me to do it again? Because the first time I felt like I was just sort of figuring it out. But I'm sure there's probably a slightly better way that I could have done it. So... Yes, says Vanessa. Not Van Vanessa, Janice. Yes, do it again. Right, let's find another one. Now, the only thing is, I need to find one that's with a thinner cardstock. So, let's do it again. I'm going to end up with all these lovely bags. Right. Now, that's thick. Oh, that's thin. That's thin. That's thin. That's thick. That's thick. Oh, that's that thin or thick. Oh, that was a little bit battered. What did Martina say? Well, I usually do bottom lines first. Ah, okay. Before I glue, okay, right. I will do the bottom first this time. Yeah, I, yeah, because I ended up scoring two. Oh no, let's do this one. Two 
layers of car, didn't I? And that's what I ended up doing. So, okay. Right, let's see if we can do this without any rulers and without any trimmers. So... You just got to be precise in making sure that you line up it side by side. As long as you line up one side, the other side will, should follow. So. Okay. So far, so good. Then fold a little bit on this side. Hi Elaine. Sorry if I've missed to say hello to anybody. I'm I'm sorry. I've had my head down trying to sort this out. Okay, so Martina, would you then fold I don't know, that there to figure out where I need to do the next fold. Is that what you're saying? That this measurement here Half the paper now. Oh, glue it now. Ah, okay. Do what about even cutting? Shall I just cut this bit off as well? I think I'm going to cut that bit off because I find it easier to glue the box together without this section. I'm just going to cut that off. Okay. Oh, not gluing. You said glue line now. Not gluing, just fold. Okay. Fold that to there. See, this is my origami practicing days is coming in handy because you really have got to be pre as precise as you can be. Oh, not gluing now. Okay, then fold, that's what, that, this is what I call that glue strip, the glue line, yes, yes. Okay, so then fold here, now fold away one side. Okay. And then bring that one to meet that one. Is that right? Well, that is that correct? Oh no 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 no! Do that and that. Yeah, I got it. So then, what you do is you fold that over, and then you bring this to meet the glue line again. Yeah, I think I got it. Although, hold on, that's not very precise. I just need to make that more precise, that fold. It's got a slight twist in it. Right, there we go. So, again, just as precise as you can... Oh, get that camera out of my face. I'm bumping my head. Right, get that in there. It's not quite perfect, but it will do. Of course, because we've done all the angles correctly. Ooh, this is such a cool technique. Who needs a bag punch board when we've got scissors and our fingers and if, even if you don't have a bone folder you can use your scissor handle by George I think she's got it yes the night they invented champagne I know that's a different musical don't shout at me 
but I just felt like singing it. Da 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 is this one a box? It could be a box if you had scored it on the other side as well. But I'm just making a bag. But we could make a box with this technique if you want to, shall we? Seeing as we're, you know, figuring it out together tonight. Juju! Da 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 that is my favourite bit, is at the end, when he realises that he's in love with her. And, um, sorry, spoiler alert. <laughs> sorry. Sorry if you've not seen the film. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, come on, most of you must have seen that film by now. <laughs> oh, we met at six, we met at eight. I was on time. No, you were late. Ah, yes. I remember it well. Oh, Maurice Chevalier. Thank heaven. For little girls. For little girls, but bigger every day. You could not sing that song right now, could you? I'm sorry, but just I'm just saying... That, you know, I know Maurice Chalat Vallier made it, meant it in all good, you know, whatever. But, gosh, you could not get away with making a film with a man singing about little girls. No way. Right, I usually make 5 by 7 cards, so I don't think an 8.5 by 11 would work for me. No, I think you would have to use a 12 by 12, Dee Dee. Yeah. You're so funny, Ruth. It's, thanks, Vicky. I'm glad someone thinks I'm funny. Um, ooh, hold on. Five by seven. Yes, you definitely have to use a 12 by 12. Yeah. Okay, so that was a bag. So this time, if you're not too bored, shall we do that whole thing again? Hopefully it'll be quicker now. I know what I'm doing, if I can remember. It's, it's good to do a process like this when you learn it for new. For new. Just do it a few times so it really kind of sinks in. It's like riding a bike, isn't it? It's like, it's got to stick in. Right, so let's do another one. This time we will make it close up. So I'm just trying to find a piece of card. Two little boys had two little toys. Each had a wooden horse. You mean that song, Wendy? The Rolf Harris one? Yes, we won't mention Rolf Harris. Dear me. I don't know, he was my childhood hero. I used to watch him drawing away, you know. Ooh, what's it going to be? Is it a penguin? Is it a, you know... You make it so fun and real. Sweetheart, have you heard rap music? <laughs> yeah, I choose not to listen to some rap music. <laughs> I do actually quite like rap music. But, um, yeah, some I do not listen to. Yep. Sorry, got a gooey bit on there. Just taking that off. I know, the first Bob Ross. Can you see what it is yet? <laughs> Get his wobble board. <laughs> his didgeridoo out. <laughs> I won't be able to stop singing too little boy. Sorry, Vicky. Um, okay, so let's do this again. So excited. Right, so you've... Oh, no, hold on. Is this the... Yeah, no, this is the... This is the thinner stuff. Oh, I don't know. It feels thick. Ooh, maybe it's because I'm just doing this fine little bit. Right, so do that there. Then fold 
fold it to meet the glue line. That's what Martina said, didn't she? Fold it to meet the glue line. Then, I know I've got to do the sides yet, but I'll do that in a second. Then fold. Fold that there. And bring this one to meet this one. I'm doing a box. So I'm going to do a fold on both sides, actually. Um, but the trick will be making sure that the, the side folds are the same size as these. So, to make sure that happens... I guess one has to do a little corner fold like that, mark it there. I guess if you wanted to measure at this point you could do bottom line but what if you're making a box because that's what I'm going to do I'm going to try and make a box so it needs to be the same doesn't it Actually, the other way to do it is to bring this up to here and do your little, do fold that there. So then where you've got the intersection, that is where you know that you need to put that fold. Oh, well, if it doesn't work, what, what do we all say? I make the mistake so you don't have to. That way, I've just wasted 20 minutes of your life and not a piece of paper. <laughs> Actually, I've had a bit of a laugh at the same time, watching me cock it up. <laughs> ah, this paper is stunning. You're using it, Ruth. It looks kind of like wallpaper. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? I have done a one... I did film me doing this a few weeks ago. Right, so... So this is going to come over to meet that. That's going to be the box. So I want to be able to, um... oh, what's that fold that you do where you make it, you score halfway and then you make it close inside? Ooh, 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 ooh. I presume you have to do all the scoring before. <gasps> so if I score that like that, will that work? Where do I get my bone folder? Uh, off, you know, that big shop on the internet that starts with an A. I think it's just a cheapy one. It's, it's just a plastic cheapy one. It's not... I know, I was just thinking of her. Where is she when you need her help? Um, Sam, I'll just dial her now. Sam. <laughs> okay, so. Let's do a little bit of cutting now. So we need to cut that off there because we don't need that to close our box up, do we? And then we'll cut all these bits off because we don't need these either. Uh, no, not that one, Jeanette. <laughs> no, the one that starts with A and has got the letter Z in it. <laughs> Actually, it's what these leaves remind you of. The mm, rainforest. <laughs> no, I am allowed to say the word. I just don't want to. 
I've read an article today. The person who owns Amazon is making a ton of money right now. A ton of money. So, right, so that's going to glue to make that. That, I want that to fold inwards. So I don't need that section there, do I? And do I really need these ones as well? I don't know. I don't know. I've not made one of these before. I think I've seen one of these in action, but... Um... Oh, really? Stampin' Yama, Linda. Oh, dear me. That, I bet that was a big blaze. So the idea is that then, I think you pop these, I don't know if I need to stick them down or what, but anyway, the idea is that to close this then, you just do, you just do that. that will close shut like that and I guess you could punch a couple of holes you could punch a yeah if you've got a circle punch then you make a finger thing couldn't you but am I meant to cut am I meant to cut this away at all or just leave it do you think just stick it and leave it I think I'll cut this off Right, I'm going to get my little, I know this isn't available anymore, so sorry about this, but um, I'm going to get my little three quarter inch punch and just eyeball. So I just look for a space on either side to be roughly the same. Punch that out and then do it the same. There. Eyeball it. Ta -da. Right, let's see if that's ready to stick together. Oh, I think I'll stick these down first. Stickety stick. Right, then this one. Oh, to make it easier, fold the flap, then bring this one to meet it. Okay, Martina, good. Now I'm hoping this is going to work. Huh, kind of. I'm sure the one I saw was slightly tighter. But anyway, that that's kind of the idea.
Oh no, that's not right. You want it <laughs> you want it to poke out a little bit. I'm sure there's another way of doing that. If someone if someone knows how to do it and, and knows a, a video, can you let me know? Because I'm sure someone gave me a box recently that I did this with. Like I got it in a swap or something. Anyway, this is just an idea and it's no, by, this is just a prototype. It's by no way finished because I'm sure there is another technique to this so there is Ruth oh thanks Kay um do, do you recollect who's done it Kay anyway so because that doesn't quite work I, I don't recommend having a go just yet until we find this video um so this could just be shut with um I'm trying to think if you could have done it with the flaps so that the flaps would have tucked in at the sides. Anyway, no. How do you make the pull-out boxes kind of like you need a top and a bottom that you pull out? You mean like a matchbox? Like a matchbox, so that yeah, you have one coming out from underneath. Um, I will do that another video. Um, I, I have done one quite a long time ago. Um, hold on, I'll see if I can find the link for it. Um, I'm not sure the measurements are super perfect, but um, you get an idea. I think it's under with my one sheet wonder right sort by oh no right where's one start one sheet wonder so here we go it's an oldie Oh my goodness, I've got like stuff on here that shouldn't be saved on here. I'm so sorry anybody that's looked through that, <laughs> through my playlist and gone, what the heck has Ruth put on here? Ah, oh, no, I haven't done it. I was thinking of something else. Sorry. But if you want to see some, have I done some other bags or boxes? That's a cute little bag. This was done ages ago. I'll, I'll share the link for this one. Copy link. Oops. I'll show you the outcome. So it's more of a square box shape. Oh, look, and I've masked the butterflies. Wow, wait, I don't know how I got those to line up. You'll have to watch it and see. <laughs> oh, dear. Wow. That's pretty old, that video. Uh, anyway, right. Sorry about that. Yeah, it's like a milk bottle top. Yeah, it's like a milk carton one. Yeah. Pootles doesn't have playlists, doesn't she? No. 
there we go. I'll use the paper pixie link to all the self-closing boxes. Ah, okay. I'll have to look her up. I won't do it now. But, um... What else was I supposed Oh, the, the sizing, wasn't I? Paper pixie. I'll look her up. All right. Right, that's it, guys, for tonight, I think. Right, how many boxes do we end up making? One. Two. One, two. That's not bad, is it? Three bags. So the first bag I did with my technique of just doing the measurements, but just ignore the mistake that I made. Then this one was me trying to figure out Martina's technique. And just about getting it right. Then this was once I think I sorted out Martina's technique. And um, yeah. So thank you so much, Martina. That was so cool. So this is like the no ruler, no trimmer technique for making a bag. If you've just got a sheet of paper, some scissors and a bone folder. How cool is that? And then... We figured that we could make a box from it as well by scoring the top as well as the bottom. So um, we're gonna—I'm gonna research how to do this closure because I really like it. But I, I'm sure there is a tighter way. Like I'm sure there's something that I'm meant to do with these flaps that I'm not doing correctly. But um, yeah, try it. I learnt a lot. I learnt a lot as well, Linda. Um. Yeah, um, I got the bone folder off Amazon. I'm, I'm part of this like gifting group on Amazon of girls, and um, I put it on my wish list, and uh, my sister bought it for me, Esther. And I've got two. There was this one, and um, oh, it came in a pack of two, and it was really cheap. It was like less than three quid. And then, to be fair, they're not the best quality. They're not the best quality. They were fairly inexpensive. They're not as good quality as the Stampin' Up! ones. But um, I can't find my Stampin' Up! one at the moment. <laughs> I'm so rubbish. Um, I can't find it. So I just saw these the other day and I thought, oh, I'll stick them in my wish list. And, um, yeah. I don't, I don't quite know what you're meant to do with this one. Is it is it for getting in... I don't know. Is it for getting in nooks and crannies? I don't know. Like what? Or is that for really smoothing out things? I don't know. Who, who someone here knows about bone folders? <laughs> yeah, the Stampin' Up! one is, um, I'd say it's at least five inches, if not six. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, I've got two, would you believe? I've got two of them. But. I don't know where it's gone. I thought I'd been really organised and, you know, tidied my workspace and, you know, they should just be there, but... No, and I keep checking my tool drawer, thinking it'll magically appear in there. But no, they're not in my tool drawer. Unless they've fallen out at the back. No, they've not. Um, see if they've magically appeared in my scissor drawer. No. Oh, I don't know. Anyway, lovely to see you guys. I'll say a quick hello. And um, I've got an idea for a, quite a big project. I, I'll i see how tomorrow goes. I do have... Oops, I nearly stopped streaming then. I didn't want to do that. Um, I do have loads of parcels to send out because folks who have shopped with me and in... Where are we? We're in June now. Guys who shopped with me in May, you are going to be getting your vouchers and your thank you card and um, 
a little thank you maybe stamp set uh, for my retirement list because I, I was emailing and messaging various people today to ask them what they wanted from my box of goodies and I've gone through my punches and decided that I am going to be a good girl and get rid of some so I already got rid of four little mini ones today to a friend of mine who she shot with me earlier in the year so I said would you like these because she's got two little girls and I thought she'd like those um so, I, I can't post outside of the UK, but for those of you who are interested, uh, if you do place an order with me this month, um, I will still have a box of stuff for you to choose something for free out of. So basically you kind of earn the equivalent. So for example, I don't know, a punch is 17 quid. So if you spend £17 with me, then I will send you punch for example and I have got various stamp sets and dies and stuff to get rid of Teflon yes Jenny I do I would love to have a Teflon bone folder but have you seen the prices of them yes an actual bone I think the Stampin' Up ones are actual bone and they're made from a, a responsible sourced bone like it's cow bone or something you know Obviously not suitable if you're a vegetarian or a vegan, but um, if you are concerned about responsibly sourced bone, yeah, they are actual bone. So I would recommend the Stampin' Up! ones. Don't buy a cheapy plasticky one. Stampin' Up! ones are lovely, but um, I'm very grateful for it uh, because I've lost the two that I had. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what you've lost yours Jenny <laughs> uh, yeah the Teflon oh the Teflon ones are at least £20 aren't they I could buy a whole stamp set yeah Jenny you may as well be buying stamps so I'm finally getting rid of this flower punch. I'll be, there's a stamp set that goes with this one. The curly, well, round label one. Who remembers this from way back when? Look, the bunting. Then the, I'm finally going to give the bow away. The bow punch. Incidentally, the bow punch, if you cut it there and cut it there, it makes really good eyes. For unicorns just saying um oh my goodness this is probably one of the earliest punches i ever bought the one and three quarter scallop circle i use this to death not to death because it's not dead it is not dead it is still going strong this time a little bit squeaky but it is still going strong i must have used this over a thousand times this punch uh, and it's still going really well uh, what else am I getting rid of? Oh, there's a stamp set to go with this. Oh, you got the triangle ones. Oh, you got one for 15 US dollars. That's not too bad, Sheila. I've got, I've got a stamp set that goes with that. And I'm going to get rid of that one, the the banner punch. I don't, I just don't use it. And there's the little mini, um, I don't know what you call it really. It's like a little pretty label, but it's like a mini one. It's really tiny. So, as I said, if you shop with me this month, um, I will give you the equivalent in retired products. So that might be a punch. It might be stamps. Could be anything. Um, there we go. Yes. Yeah, so my idea for tomorrow, I'll see if I get around to doing it. If I don't, I'll save it for next week. Um, is either to do something on canvas, which I haven't done for a really long time, um, something like altered art type thing, but using Stampin' Up! products. So I would use the texture paste. I better check that it's still runny. Uh, texture paste, maybe some inks and some spritzing and all that kind of thing. But what I'd like to do is play with some of the new colours, the cardstock new colours, and make some really fabulous uh, flowers. 
So we've got, I've not experimented making flowers from the heart punch yet. Still haven't done that. So I want to do that with the heart punch, the balloon punch. Yes, messy, very messy, Wendy. Wendy, did you get a parcel today? You might get one tomorrow. They've come down in price. Ah, I love messy, says Vicky. <laughs> right, I'll go go to bed. I woke up earlier than usual today, so I'm feel feeling the weary. Great to have you. Lovely to see you. Thank you for everyone being lovely and friendly. And um, is anybody new here? Just check in. Anyone new on my live that's not been on my videos or not been on my channel before or not uh, encounter, you know, been on a live before? The way that you know it's live, just just so that um, you know, is because I know I I'm a bit naughty and I put. I put the little red dot, don't I? But the way you know that I'm live is because it actually says live there. So, um... Oh, look what's turned up. Who was here for the discussion about the Princess Bride? Oh, yes, thumbs up, please. Um, just It's just come up on my news feed on C, is it CBS this morning. Princess Bride star... Patinkin reveals his favourite line from the film. <laughs> ah. You were wonder. Okay, should we listen to it? Should we see what he says? Hold on, I've got to turn it up. I went to the theatre, my wife was there and she had the movie on. It was at the end of the movie. Right when Buttercup falls out the window into Andre's arms and Robin falls into Andre's arms. The man in black, Carrie, is sitting there asking me to be the Dread Pirate Robert. Okay. And, and that 30-year-old Mandy and the 55, 58-year-old Mandy's watching this, man, watching the 30-some-year-old Mandy say a line that I said, it's in the movie, but I didn't really hear it as that young man. And for me, it's the most potent line in the whole film. And that line is, I have been in the revenge business so long, now that he's sober, I do not know what to do with the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. And I love that line, and I love it for all of us, because the purpose of revenge, in my personal opinion, is completely worthless and pointless. And Profound. the purpose of existence is to embrace our fellow human being, not be revengeful, and um, turn our darkness into light. So that's the line I love from the movie. That's really profound. I love that. Oh, okay. So if you haven't seen The Princess Bride, I can't recommend it enough. Um, it's got such lovely moments in it. And it's funny. It's romantic. It's fabulous. Yeah. You will share that with your daughter. Do you want me to put the um, link? I can put the link up for that. Uh, library, share, share, copy link, share, copy I've got to hear myself now, I hate that, I forgot to turn myself off. Oh, I lost it then. Hold on. Right. Start again. Library. Share. Copy link. Paste. There we go. Ah. <sighs> As you wish. <laughs> Ruth was singing. 
No, Esther, we're a figment of your mouth. Yeah, we're not really here. I haven't watched a film in years. No, Christine, it's because you keep watching me. <laughs> Christine doesn't watch telly anymore. She just watches Ruth. Yes, I know, we've covered Gigi, Rolf Harris, and now The Princess Bride. Again. Yeah. After a few years, you'll get bored of me mentioning these films, and you'll actually go and watch them. Romeo and Juliet with Olivia Hussey and Len... Ooh, I don't think I've seen that version. That sounds good. Um, right. I am off. Did you find me a Sheila? Oh, did you find me, Sheila? <laughs> Sorry, I completely misread that line. All right, so... But folks in Australia... <laughs> <laughs> who's here who's here from Australia <laughs> so us in the UK we used to love watching Home and Away and um, <laughs> uh, and what's his name oh what's his name Alf Stewart used to go you're flaming Sheila he used to call women Sheilas. But is that an Australian thing anyway? So when Esther just typed, were you looking for me, Sheila? I just read it like she was saying, did you find me, Sheila? <laughs> oh, oh, you loved Robin Williams films, but you can't watch them anymore. They are sad. You still watch Home and Away from time to time. I have not watched it for years. Is um, I think Alf's still in it. I was chatting to a friend in Australia and she had it on the telly and Alf came on. So I was like, no way, is he still around? Bruce and Sheila? Yes, it's an Australia thing. Okay. You flaming hoon. You see, it's funny, these things don't leave you. They stick. You flaming gala. Yeah. Is that really rude? Good night, Stampin' Yama. See, I've got to say it in an Australian accent now. Good night, Linda. Nice to see you. Right, I better get off before people start giving me thumbs downs. <laughs> Go to bed, says Sheila. Go to bed. Sheila's like my mum. It's so cool. Sheila chases me to bed. But she thinks I'm an hour ahead. I started trying to watch McCloyd's, McC McC McCloyd's Daughters and I found it a little bit slow, but I maybe I need to get back into it. I started watching, uh, is it something Magnolia's on Netflix? That was quite gentle. You sound like my Siri, he has an Aussie accent. Siri? Sweet Magnolia's, that's it, that's what I've been watching. That's quite fun. Right, lots of love to you all. Hopefully see you at some point, maybe tomorrow, but if not, it depends how much I get done because I've got a lot of posting to do. Um, so if not, I'll see you on Monday. Take care. Yeah, flame. No, S, that's rude. You can't say that. <laughs> oh, talk about things that we can't say anymore. Guys used to call girls Sheila's when I arrived in 1948. Not anymore. I can imagine. Jane! Jane, you need to email me. You won a card. I've got it here for you somewhere. I thought I'd put it in an envelope. I did. It's got your name on it. Good Nacht Schlafschron. North Star. Third time, but I keep chatting. Yeah, Wendy. Stop chatting. Night, everyone. Night, Melanie. Uh, Jane, email me, please, with your address. I know I, it scraped someone's name out. That was because, and I will tell you now, um, Glenna Chong, that was going to be her card. And then she went and won a second card, and I had to use a different envelope. So rather than waste the envelope, it, it's, I've scrubbed Glenna's name out, and I've put your name. So I hope you don't mind. I've recycled it. Sorry. Uh, it's ruthtrice at gmail.com. 
Um, and if uh, ooh, ooh, eh, eh, eh. I'll put it on here. Oh, thank you, Kay. <laughs> I should just let my secretary do it. Kay, thank you. There we go. Thanks, uh, Jane. Email me. I know, Kay's on it. There we go. Lots of love. Bye.